has grown. The dream is gone. Hi. Good morning. I'm David Feldman. This is The Mop Up. Antonio Guterres is Secretary General of the United Nations. He's a socialist from Portugal. And when it comes to Ukraine, we need to listen to him and probably only him. More about the UN and Antonio Guterres in a few moments. A year ago, back in 2022, we were assured that the war in Ukraine would be over by spring. I guess we forgot to ask spring of what year? I want peace now. I am fully aware that Joe Biden isn't doing enough to drag Putin to the peace table. And I know my country lives for war. We are a violent, violent people, 50,000 of whom will die this year from gunshots. I know all this. I want peace. But there are some Americans on the right selling peace, but what they really want is victory for Vladimir Putin. I don't know anything. I really don't. I don't know anything other than that war is wrong. And as David Swanson writes, war is a lie. And I have nothing but respect for David Swanson, Dennis Kucinich, Chris Hedges, Lord, Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, who are all leading America's peace movement. And I have nothing but awe for Roger Waters from Pink Floyd. Comfortably numb, live in Berlin, is like witnessing childbirth. It can't be described, only experienced. So when these people demand peace, I listen. But not everyone who calls for peace wants peace. Remember Don Altabello in Godfather 3, who kept repeating, blessed is the peacemaker, while secretly plotting Michael Corleone's assassination. I'm going to be talking about Ukraine and a little later on about that libertarian peace march in Washington on Sunday. The libertarian peace march in Washington. I smell a rat. President Biden made a surprise visit to Ukraine on Monday. While meeting with Ukrainian President Zelensky, Biden promised to deliver more critical equipment, including artillery, ammunition, anti-armor systems, and air surveillance radars. Biden arrived in Kiev after a 10-hour train ride from Poland. Why do I think billions of dollars earmarked for Amtrak in America will somehow now make its way to Ukraine. To guarantee Biden's security, America alerted Russia beforehand and said, do not attack the train. Biden announced $500 million in additional aid will be coming Zelensky's way. Zelensky has asked for long range missiles and fighter jets. No word if those are on the way. Vladimir Putin, who is expected to deliver his own State of the Union Tuesday night, called Biden's trip a publicity stunt. Biden's surprise visit to Ukraine was under the cloak of secrecy, with only two American reporters allowed to accompany him after both those reporters agreed to hand over their cell phones and other communication devices for safekeeping. It has now been a year since Vladimir Putin's Russia invaded Ukraine. Biden said he visited Ukraine to show America's unwavering commitment to Ukraine's democracy. Yes, democracy. That's exactly why America is giving Ukraine close to $100 billion in tanks, Humvees, helicopters, air-to-ground missiles, Stinger missiles, tow missiles, howitzers, and switchblade drones. It's all about democracy because we love, America loves spreading democracy about as much as Melania loves spreading her legs for Donald. That's why America is sending all those weapons 
to protect all those Ukrainian pipelines that provide all that democracy to Europe because America's economy runs on democracy. War is wrong, and as David Swanson writes, war is a lie. Given America's history of lies in Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan, I don't trust anyone in this country when it comes to making war. But here's what I think I know. According to the BBC, UK intelligence officials have estimated that since the war began, Russian regular forces and Wagner troops, that's his pri Putin's private army, they may have suffered between 175,000 to 200,000 casualties, including 40,000 to 60,000 deaths. According to the UN, 17.6 million people, that's almost 40% of Ukraine's population, need humanitarian assistance today. More than 7,000 civilians have been killed. And these are only the figures confirmed by the UN. The actual toll will be much higher. Nearly 8 million Ukrainians have fled to neighboring countries, and 5.3 million Ukrainians have become internally displaced. They've become refugees in their own country. I know my country is a war economy. I know that here in America, we do a pretty good job convincing ourselves that war is a constant in nature and that nature abhors a vacuum. And if we're not the top dog, then somebody else will be. And then it will be our women and children going up in flames. There is big money in making weapons here in America and stirring up conflict overseas. And I know that here in America, we all pay a price for funding this war machine. We pay a price psychologically as well as financially. We see it in our crumbling schools, our crumbling infrastructure. America is a nation that has money for bombs, but none for health care. I know that all war, all war can be prevented. But in America, we love war and we have been trained to become a violent people. We are becoming more and more violent year after year as our economy becomes a war economy. It destroys all our institutional memories. Even doctors have become AR-15 toting congressmen like Ronnie Jackson, Donald Trump's personal physician from Texas. This is what weapons and war do to a, to a doctor. Here is, here is a healer. Here is a doctor, Ronnie Jackson, describing why he loves Donald Trump. And I realized I really loved the man. You know, I loved his attitude. I loved his aggressive nature. I loved the way he just said what he thought. And, uh, and I realized that we had a lot in common. And This is a doctor. What, what do you love? I loved his aggressive nature. I love his aggressive nature. We, as a people, love, live for aggression, which is why the most corrupt president in modern history, Donald Trump, is running for re-election on a new type of law and order, one dripping in aggression, one dripping in sadism. Donald Trump, who has more criminal investigations that I have time to mention, uh, he's being maybe frog-marched any day now, but he is running for president, appealing to a certain segment of our population who will vote for him if he promises public hangings, public firing squads, 
Rolling Stone magazine reports that Donald Trump, this criminal, is going to run on getting tough with criminals, shooting drug dealers, and, he says, making their loved ones pay for the bullet. The Republicans love the Second Amendment, or at least their wrongful reading of the Second Amendment is what they love, but they sure hate the Eighth Amendment, which prohibits cruel and unusual punishment. We love guns, and we love hurting people, which is why we never prosecuted a single Bush appointee who sanctioned torture during the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. This miskite is Gina Haspel. She was appointed by Donald Trump to be CIA director. According to the New York Times and ProPublica, Gina Haspel oversaw a secret CIA prison in Thailand back in 2002 where al-Qaeda suspects were tortured. They were waterboarded. They were locked in a small box that was then thrown repeatedly against the wall, tortured. Gina Haspel testified under oath that this quote-unquote enhanced interrogation technique, that's what Cheney and Bush called torture, an enhanced interrogation technique. During her confirmation hearings, when Trump appointed her to head the CIA, Gina Haskell lied under oath and said enhanced interrogation was successful in obtaining actionable intelligence. That is a lie. And instead of going to prison, Trump appointed, appointed her to head his CIA because he is all about, all about the cruelty, as is most of uh, the Republican Party and too many Americans. According to Rolling Stone, Trump executed more prisoners than any modern president. 13. He would have executed more if he could find enough on death row. And he can't wait to become president again to kill more prisoners. Okay? We are a very aggressive nature. Uh, we have a very aggressive nature. The American people thrive off violence. Pathological violence. This is Jim Jordan, Donald Trump's attack dog. He's now chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. He recently appeared on a podcast talking about how he was raised. Raised in a conservative kind of Christian home? You were raised in a... a conservative Christian home. Uh, tell me more about your background. My background is the sport of wrestling. Your background is the sport of wrestling. Uh, that's kind of violent. Uh, and your religion is? Christian. Yeah, your background is wrestling and you're a conservative Christian who believes in wrestling and you worry about how we're raising our children. They're not tough enough, right? But yeah, it's probably wrestling because it, it's all about competition. I think it's one of the problems in the country today is people, you don't have people competing. And frankly, I don't think you have enough people just involved in, in being tough. No one gets in a fighting school anymore. You don't have enough kids playing football or wrestling. I think that's a problem. So mm, you, 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 you think our kids aren't tough enough anymore and they don't want what? What don't they want? No one gets in a fighting school anymore. And yeah, nobody gets into a fight in school anymore. Isn't that interesting? The guy who wrestled in school, the guy who trained all day to fight, thinks it's bad that school children don't get into fights anymore. In other words, the guy who spent all his time learning how to beat up people is upset that you can't be a bully anymore. Continue. And you got in a fight. Every, every couple of weeks you get in a fight with somebody. It was all good. That's life on the playground. And you didn't, it wasn't a grudge. You just got in a fight because, you know, out safe, out safe and kickball. Oh, no, no, we're going to get in the fight and everything's fine. But I, I think we're losing some of that. And I, I don't know that that's good. Mm, yeah, we need more people fighting on the playground. Because while other students were maybe learning math or chess, you were learning how to beat up people. And uh, it was all good. People fighting because... 
because you won, because you like beating up on people. Every, every couple of weeks you get in a fight with somebody, it was all good. Every couple of weeks you get into a fight with somebody and it was all good because that's all you did was beat up people raised in your conservative home. Uh, and what is your religion? Christian. Yeah, uh, Christian, right. And uh, when you were a wrestling coach at Ohio State... It was all good. Right, and when your wrestlers told you that Dr. Strauss was molesting them, what did you say? Oh, hang on. What did, what did you say? It was all good. You said uh, getting uh, molested by Dr. Strauss uh, makes you, you tougher, right? You said it was... It was all good. All right. Getting punched or getting molested, it's... It was all good. Yes, because it builds character. All right. Uh, this is Republican conservative Brian Donalds, who represents Florida's 19th Congressional District. That's him on the left. The congressman on the right is Florida Republican Cord Bird who, as you can see, was taught in an early age to hold your breath before a black man approaches and hold it until they leave so black men can never steal your bodily essence. Anyway, Byron Donalds is black, and he's also a conservative Republican. Like me, Congressman uh, Byron Donalds was born in Brooklyn. Uh, but I wasn't a black kid growing up in Brooklyn. He was, and it was different. He was raised by a single mom, and he was arrested growing up as a young adult on distribution of marijuana and bribery when he was young. It was expunged from his record, but he may have lied about it. And why am I bringing this up? Because last year, he voted against the respect for Marriage Act, because in 2020, he got elected to Congress calling himself a Trump-supporting, gun-owning, liberty-loving, pro-life, politically incorrect black man. And that's why earlier this year, Lauren Boebert nominated him for speaker when they were trying to beat Kevin McCarthy. Lauren Boebert decided to nominate conservative Republican Byron Donalds for speaker, which prompted Congresswoman Cori Bush to tweet, Byron Donalds is not a historic candidate for speaker. He is a prop. Despite being black, he supports a policy agenda intent on upholding and perpetuating white supremacy. His name being in the mix is not progress. It's pathetic. See, there's a simple rule. If you're black, Jewish, Muslim, woman, LGBTQ or Hispanic, you're not allowed to vote for a Republican. And you're certainly not allowed to run for office as a Republican because this has become the party of white Christian nationalists who get blacks, Jews, Muslims, women, members of the LGBTQ community, and Hispanics killed, persecuted, or left with no choice but suicide. Congresswoman Cori Bush isn't messing around. The gloves are off, which is why I want Florida's Child Protective Services to do a welfare check on Congressman Byron Daniels's children. Here is Republican Congressman Byron Daniels, who, did I mention he voted against same-sex marriage last year? He doesn't think same-sex couples should raise a family, right? He doesn't trust same-sex couples to raise a family. But here is Republican Congressman Byron Daniels talking about fiscal responsibility and it veered off into a really creepy side road that Florida Child Protective Services should look into. 
it's an unmitigated disaster. And mom's going to be mad. Somebody's getting a spanking. I still believe in spanking. I got kids. I spank my kids. It's whatever. You know, social media can get mad at me, but it is what it is. Hmm. I'm sorry. Just just for the record, could you say that again, please? I spank my kids. You spank your kids, even though growing body of scientific research shows that spanking kids leads to aggression, antisocial behavior, anxiety, and depression. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I think that's child abuse, and I think Child Protective Services should do a welfare check on the congressman's kids to see how hard he's spanking them. It is legal to spank your kids. It's not legal to abuse your children. It is what it is. It is what it is. Beating kids, beating kids, hitting kids. Uh, Congressman Jim Jordan, what do you think about child abuse? It was all good. Yeah, it was all good. Beating kids, celebrating fights on the schoolyard, aggression, and uh, looking the other way when uh, Dr. Strauss is molesting your, your wrestlers. This is the Republican Party. These are damaged souls who must continue perpetuate the cycle of violence, which is why... They love guns, police brutality, firing squads if Donald Trump gets reelected, capital punishment, and of course, war. They love war. But the war in Ukraine has these Republicans flummoxed. You see, they love war, but they also love Vladimir Putin. And they can't really admit that they're rooting for him. They're rooting for him and rooting against Ukraine because Putin, besides giving them money, Putin is everything they love, a right-wing Christian nationalist, an authoritarian. He's white, and he's all about being white and persecuting the gays. The Republicans, the right-wing, are very dishonest when it comes to the war in Ukraine. So a lot of the Republicans, a lot, pretended to be hippies on Sunday in Washington for the Rage Against the War Machine rally against America's support for Ukraine. Nothing screams peace more than rage against the machine. Rage. We want peace so much we're in a rage. Yeah, it was sponsored by a lot of people in a rage. It was sponsored by the Libertarian Party, those counterfeit Republicans. Anyone who says they're a Libertarian is a Republican. It was also sponsored by the TNT Talk Radio Network, which is a collection of international right-wing anti-vaxxers and anti-lockdown talk show hosts. It was sponsored by the Mises Caucus, which is part of the Libertarian Party. Now, there were, as I said at the top, there were some genuine anti-war people like Dennis Kucinich. And I, I saw that Christopher Hedges uh, was scheduled to speak, as well as Jill Stein. But way too many of the people associated with rage against the war machine Way too many of the people who spoke, who sponsored this rally are way too toxic, way too duplicitous, way too either right wing or pretending not to be right wing. This makes me question who is behind this peace rally Again, I'm all for peace. I'm just not sure Dennis Kucinich and Chris Hedges and Jill Stein should be forming alliances with far-right, quote-unquote, libertarians who might have a different definition of what constitutes peace. You see, we all want peace. I just don't trust a peace march organized by COVID scam artists like Tulsi Gabbard, Ron Paul, 
Diane Sayre, who ran for Senate in New York last year as the LaRouche party candidate. Anytime I see a LaRouche candidate at an anti-war rally, uh, I don't believe, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Diane Sayre worked with Lyndon LaRouche for 32 years. And if you don't know anything about LaRouche, she has a long history of conspiracy theories rooted in both violence and racism. And then there's the anti-woke Jackson Hinkle. And of course, Jimmy Dore, they traffic in anti-vax conspiracies, pretending to be lefties when in fact they're anything but. This seemed to be a lot of hard right libertarians, a lot of far right ex-Bernie bros like Tulsi Gabbard or Jimmy Dore and Jackson Hinkle. I don't trust the people who organized it. Don't you want peace? Yes. But I'm not locking hands with cryptocurrency and ivermectin hucksters. Too many, too many libertarians trying to sell cryptocurrency gold, stock tips, and ivermectin. Plus, there was Ron Paul, Dr. Ron Paul. Now, again, Dennis Kucinich also spoke. I really respect Dennis Kucinich. He ran for president and wanted to create a cabinet-level position for Department of Peace. And I respect Roger Waters, and I'll get to him in a few seconds. I watched some of the speeches online, and I heard the great Jimmy Dore accuse people like me who didn't show up of not wanting peace in Ukraine because we didn't show up for his rally. I want peace. I want Vladimir Putin dragged to the peace table. But I also want him dragged before the International Criminal Court. And I don't think Jimmy Dore and his comrades want that. See, I want peace more than I want Putin dragged before the ICC. But I got the vibe that a lot of the people speaking at that rally... I got a vibe that they don't see the invasion of Ukraine as a criminal act. The situation in Ukraine, because of the invasion, is a human rights catastrophe. The invasion is horrible for one reason, because Putin is horrible. I know America is also horrible, but not in Ukraine. It is Putin, who is horrible in Ukraine. And while I know America meddles in the affairs of Russia and Ukraine, all in the name of profit and fossil fuels, and while I know there are elements within our national security state who wanted a war between Russia and Ukraine, that still doesn't exonerate Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin is the bad guy in this, not Ukraine and not America. Even if America provoked Russia into invading, Putin, and only Putin, is to blame for the war in Ukraine. Again, I don't trust our Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, or Biden, or Jake Sullivan, our National Security Advisor, but I really, 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 really don't trust Ron Paul, Lyndon LaRouche's Diane Sayre, Tulsi Gabbard, and Jimmy Dore, who all spoke at that rally. I bring this up because we all need to make informed decisions. And to make those informed decisions, we have to rely on not just our own research, our own reading, but on the research and reading done by people who are far, far more informed than we are. And those people who are far, far more informed than we are, those people are not Jimmy Dore, Jackson Hinkle, Dr. Ron Paul, the LaRouche candidate, Diane Sayre, 
Tulsi Gabbard, or any of the charlatans from the Libertarian Party. As a matter of fact, if these people are in favor of something, then it signals to me that I should either be against it or be very, very suspicious. Again, I want the fighting in Ukraine to stop. I think I might want the fighting to stop for reasons far, far different than most of the people who spoke at this Rage Against the War Machine rally in Washington, D.C. on February 19th. Jimmy Dore, Jackson Hinkle, some of these people know a little too much about Ukraine. They have a little too much certitude about something that resembles a gre greased pig. Ukraine is a greased pig. It is a little too difficult to get your arms completely around and fully understand. So when I watched that, you know, Jackson Hinkle, the Marxist who hands out stock tips while attacking vaccines, as well as the woke and the transgender community, when I see people who spoke at that rally on Twitter openly rooting for Putin, openly mocking Zelensky and rooting against him openly, it makes me suspicious of that entire rally. From some of these Twitter feeds of these people, it's not almost, but it, it sure seems that they're glad Putin invaded. So I'm not sure they're rooting for peace so much as they're rooting for Putin. When I see Jackson Hinkle on that stage, when I see Jimmy Dore on that stage on Sunday, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm for peace, but I don't trust these messengers and I don't trust the people who organized that rally. In his speech, Jimmy Dore said a lot of people like me didn't show up because we don't like Jimmy Dore. Exactly. And from that, he concluded we'd rather have war in Ukraine than take Jimmy Dore's side. Uh, see, Jimmy Dore isn't the peace movement. He's a movement uh, <laughs> that should be flushed. Only a malignant narcissist like Jimmy Dore can make the leap that if you don't support Jimmy's peace movement, you don't support peace. Again, I want peace, but I don't want to be associated with Jimmy Dore or Ron Paul or Tulsi Gabbard or the Libertarians because I don't trust them or their corporate donors. I don't trust their definition of peace because some of those people on that stage are openly pro-Putin. Again, I want peace. I just don't want Putin's definition of peace, which is what a lot of the people who spoke on Sunday are selling. Character counts. I don't trust Jimmy Dore's character or lack thereof. I don't trust Ron Paul or anyone associated with the Libertarian Party. Now, they can be right about peace, but wrong on how to get there. You know, Richard Nixon was elected in 68, promising, quote unquote, peace with honor. Don't you want peace with honor? Who doesn't want peace with honor? Which meant, peace with honor meant when Nixon got elected, after running on peace with honor, he bombed Hanoi illegally, bombed Cambodia, and he escalated the war. More American soldiers died during his term in Vietnam than any other president. That was his getting us peace with honor. In Vietnam, the military often said they needed to save a village from the Viet Cong by destroying it. Don't you want to save the village? Sure, who doesn't want to save the village? Then let's set fire to these thatched roofs because we have to save the village. 
Don't you want peace with honor? This is what I smelled watching Sunday's peace rally. I heard a lot about peace, but I heard more about how horrible Zelensky is. I heard more about how America provoked Putin. But nobody talked about how horrible Putin is. Nobody talked about the humanitarian crisis Putin unleashed in Ukraine right now. I didn't hear anybody bad-mouthing Putin. It was very similar to the isolationists during World War II. The America Firsters, that's where the term America First comes from. Donald Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene, they always say, you know, we believe in America First. That comes from right before Pearl Harbor, the America Firsters, the Charles Lindberghs and Father Coglins, who attacked Roosevelt and the Jews here in America. They claimed Roosevelt and the Jews uh, wanted to get America into the war against Hitler, right? And the America Firsters wanted, they said, peace, right? They had nothing good to say about Hitler, nothing good to say about Roosevelt and the Jews, but nothing bad to say about Hitler, right? The America Firsters, nothing good to say about the American Jews and Roosevelt, nothing good to say about them, and nothing bad to say about Hitler. And that's what I saw at the Rage Against the War Machine anti-war rally in Washington, D.C. Nothing good to say about Hillary Clinton. Nothing good to say about Joe Biden. Nothing good to say about Zelensky. Nothing good to say about Ukraine. And nothing bad to say about Putin. It reminded me of the pro-fascist, anti-Semites, the America Firsters before World War II, people like Henry Ford, who claimed to be all about peace, when in fact, they loved Hitler. They weren't against war. They were just against war with Hitler. Now, look, all war is wrong. And as David Swanson writes, all war is a lie. And looking back, there probably was a way to prevent World War II. But Father Coughlin, Henry Ford, Charles Lindbergh, and the America Firsters were never about peace. They had no problem with Hitler when he invaded France, Poland, or Czechoslovakia. They had no problem when Hitler drop bombs on London, and they certainly had no problem with Operation Barbarossa. They had no problem when Hitler invaded Russia. In fact, they wanted, the America Firsters wanted Hitler to invade Russia because Russia was communist. The America First crowd didn't want peace. They wanted Hitler. And that's who some of these people at this so-called peace rally on Sunday reminded me of. People who don't want peace, they want Putin. I don't get a peaceful vibe off most of the people who spoke at that rally. Jimmy Dore is one of the most belligerent men I've ever met in my life. And... You know, I can't count the number of times I thought Jimmy was about to punch me. I just don't see him as a man of peace. I don't trust him. Just because he sounds correct doesn't mean he's right. Jimmy is correct for demanding peace, but he's not right. The same way Jimmy can be a little right about COVID, but mostly wrong. In Jimmy's speech on Sunday, he couldn't help himself, could not help himself. He had to attack the vaccines. 
at this anti-war rally, he had to go after the COVID vaccine. Not good. I don't trust someone who claims they're pro-peace, but anti-vax. This is an addled mine. These are low information opinions spewing from Jimmy, fueled by rage and conspiracy theories. So on important life and death issues like COVID and Ukraine, I'm not throwing my lot in with scam artists who take a germ of truth like peace is better than war, who doesn't agree with that, and then they twist that truth into something nefarious. I do not trust the people who organized the rage against the war machine anti-war rally. They're trying to sell us something, and it isn't peace. They would say, you don't want peace? And I say, not your definition of peace. Don't you want to cure COVID? Yeah, but not your cure for COVID, because your cure for COVID is horse dewormer. What's your ivermectin for Ukraine, Jimmy Dore? He didn't say, other than, from what I can tell, let Russia win. That seems to be his ivermectin. Let COVID win and let Russia win. They don't want to spend another penny on Ukraine. And they want peace negotiations, I agree. But what if Russia won't negotiate and it continues the mass slaughter in Ukraine? Then what? It seems like a lot of these people don't think Ukraine should be a sovereign nation. Now, again, not all these people, but some. A lot of white Christian nationalists are rooting for Putin because they see him as the great white hope. Again, I'm not saying all these people who spoke believe that, but there are plenty of American, white American, Christian conservative racists and bigots who loathe the LGBTQ community who are rooting for Putin. And that is why the GOP is so flummoxed by the war in Ukraine, the GOP loves Putin. It's why so many Republicans want to stop funding this war. A lot of the people who spoke at that rally also claim, and this is one of the tells, a lot of the people who spoke at that rally, also claimed that Russia had nothing to do with Trump winning in 2016. They totally dismissed that as a hoax. And while they won't say they voted for Trump, they only have bad things to say about Hillary. Again, I'm not saying all of them voted for Trump. But I think a lot of those people who spoke at that rally, who organized that rally, are too chicken shit to admit they voted for Trump. So I'm not going to lock hands with crypto white nationalists, dishonest people. I'm not going to lock hands with them for peace because I don't think they want peace. There are pro-Putin elements within the right wing who are taking money from Putin, getting their news from Russian websites. And from what I can tell by watching and listening to parts of Sunday's march, they sure seem more pro-Putin than they are pro-peace. Again, I like Dennis Kucinich and David Swanson. They spoke. And I like Roger Waters. I'll get to Roger Waters in a second. But it didn't look to me like too many people up there didn't look to me like they wanted uh, an end to Ukraine more than they wanted a, an end to war. Again, I don't know enough about this situation in Ukraine. But I do know there's a certain type 
that's rooting for Putin. They tend to be on the far right, and they're wearing the 60s peace movement, but it doesn't fit. Ukraine is complicated, and anybody who says it's not, anybody who has certitude, is trying to sell you something. It's complicated because there's oil, land, religion, racism, tribalism, and power involved. Everyone who has a vested interest in Ukraine tries to tell a different story. And because we have so many problems here in America to tend to, we have to rely on people we trust to help us figure out what's going on in Ukraine and what, what we should do. Who do you trust? Well, I certainly don't trust Joe Biden, but I also know I don't trust most of the people who spoke at that rally. I don't trust Jimmy Dore, Ron Paul, Tulsi Gabbard, anyone from Lyndon LaRouche's party or the Cato Institute or the Libertarian Party. The Libertarian Party is all about no government, which is why oil and gas companies, especially the Koch brothers who founded the, the uh, Cato Institute, they pour hundreds of millions of dollars into these libertarian think tanks to convince Americans that small government is the answer when what they really want is large profits. Small government means large Profits. Charles Koch founded the Cato Institute right after the Powell memo. I don't trust these people on anything. The Cato Institute wants peace. The libertarians want peace. Define what the Koch brothers see as peace in Ukraine for me, can you? Tacitus quotes the Celtic chieftain defeated by the Romans in Scotland as saying, quote, to robbery, slaughter, plunder, they give the lying name of empire. They make a desert and call it peace. They make a desert and call it peace. Your peace is not my peace. How is it possible that these agro, anti-woke, reactionary banshees like Jimmy Dore and Jackson Hinkle are suddenly John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Rage against the war machine. Even the name suggests anti-woke, toxic, pro-Trump masculinity. Do I want peace? Yes. I just don't want Henry Kissinger or Jimmy Dore negotiating it. We have to trust people when they advocate peace. We can't do this by ourselves. We can't do our own research. I remember something my father told me, and he told this to me about the Vietnam War. We were talking about the Vietnam War, which was a succession of lies told to the American people, lies about North Vietnam, lies about the Gulf of Tonkin, Russia, lies about the domino theory, lies about America, lies about democracy and communism. And these lies confuse the American people. Just enough for them to sit back and allow Lyndon Johnson to send, I don't know, half a million boys to Indochina. My father said when the war first started, when, when Johnson was escalating, he said it didn't feel right, but he couldn't articulate his feelings, and he wasn't sure why the war was wrong. He wasn't sure until the war was wrong until Martin Luther King spoke out against it. Then my father knew Vietnam was wrong because my father worked for a living and he read when he came home. He wasn't a scholar. He relied on other people, other writers, other thinkers to help him think. We all do that. If Bernie is for something or if Howie Klein is for something, I'm more inclined to be in favor of it because they are. My father taught me, yes, get an education, do your own research, 
But part of that research is relying on people you can trust. Specifically, in my father's case, Dr. King and Ralph Nader. They know more because it is their job to know more. Bernie knows more because it's his job to know more. I watched that peace rally on Sunday. I didn't see Ralph Nader or Dr. King. Yes, I saw David Swanson and, and, and Dennis Kucinich. I know Chris Hedges was scheduled to speak, but I mostly saw scam artists, punk rock libertarians. I heard Jimmy Dore speak. Jimmy Dore, who had one of the Boogaloo Boys on his show, and said, this guy wants what I want, not realizing that the Boogaloo Boys were playing Jimmy. And Jimmy tried to play the crowd Sunday by saying that Nazis and socialists can work together for peace. He said, don't, don't be against this rally because you don't like me. Don't blame the messenger. We all want peace. If you want peace, then everybody should march together. He said, Nazis and socialists can work together for peace. He literally said that. And I thought, the only people who say Nazis and socialists can work together for peace are Nazis pretending to be socialists. Nazis and socialists can't march together for peace. The same way Medicare for all can't coexist with for-profit health insurance companies. Can't have, ne never gonna, two don't work together. You either have Medicare for all or you have health insurance companies. You can't have both. Can't have Nazis and socialists. They won't, they don't march together. Nazis cannot coexist with socialists. You know who tried to convince the world Nazis and socialists can live together in peace? Jimmy Dore tried to convince us on Sunday that Nazis and socialists can live together in peace. And the last time I heard somebody say that, I was reading about Nazi Foreign Minister von Ribbentrop, who said to Russian Foreign Minister Molotov in 1939, that socialists and Nazis can live together in peace as Hitler tricked Stalin into signing the Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact. And we all know how that ended. Even Jimmy Dore knows how that ended. So I want peace, but I'm not marching with the Koch brothers. I'm not lining up with libertarians and pro-Russian, anti-vax, cryptocurrency hucksters like Jackson Hinkle and Jimmy Dore, or anybody from Lyndon LaRouche's party. I'm not buying anything they're selling, especially their iteration of peace. I don't want their version of peace. As I said, character counts. And from what I can tell, people like Dr. Ron Paul, who spoke, they want peace the same way Dr. Ron Paul wants to protect old people. Dr. Ron Paul says he wants peace. He also wants to protect old people. He wants to protect old people by eliminating Medicare and Social Security. And I suspect he wants peace in Ukraine by getting rid of Ukraine. See, we all want the same things. I want peace and I want to protect old people. I just don't agree with how you want to achieve all that. I want peace, but I don't want to eliminate Ukraine. I want to protect old people, but I don't want to eliminate Medicare and Social Security. The world is complicated on purpose. People make it complicated. So in the end, you need to be able to trust people like Dr. King, like Ralph Nader, like Bernie, people who are giving you information, who recognize that the world is complicated and aren't trying to sell you something. There can be a series of truths. Everything you say can be true, but all those truths won't add up to Putin good, Zelensky bad. 
Everything you tell me can be factually correct. But when you add it all up, the answer isn't rooting for Putin to eliminate Ukraine. When adding up your truths, and they are true, these hucksters often leave out other truths in order to arrive at something they want. They cherry pick the truths the way Dick Cheney cherry picked information to sell the invasion of Iraq. He cherry picked and made, made stuff up. When these people have certitude, always beware. I don't trust anyone who has absolute certitude. Now, a year into this Ukrainian war, a lot of things are true. And when I add it all up, when I add up all the truths, I don't come to the conclusion, Putin good, Zelensky bad. There are a lot of truths to add up. It is true that NATO has expanded right up to Russia's border and Russia doesn't like that. That is true. It's also true that when the Soviet Union was still around, James Baker, George Herbert Walker Bush's Secretary of State, promised then Soviet leader Gorbachev, who was on his way out, along with the Soviet Union, uh, Baker said that if the Soviet Union agrees to the reunification of Germany, then NATO wouldn't expand. It's true that we made that promise. America made that promise. It's true that NATO reneged on that promise, on a promise made to the Soviet Union. It's also true that the Soviet Union no longer exists, right? That promise was made in February 9th, on February 9th, 1990. James Baker had no idea that the Soviet Union would completely collapse nearly two years later. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, NATO expansion was suddenly a different animal. It is true that NATO expanded after the collapse of the Soviet Union because former Warsaw Pact countries, there was NATO and then the Warsaw Pact, that was the Soviet Union's version of NATO. It is true that the Warsaw Pact countries were terrified of being forced into an alliance with Russia again. Ask Poland's Lech Walesa what he thinks of Russia's history of expansion. Russia invaded Poland during World War II and they almost invaded it again when Lech Walesa was rising to power. Unlike the Warsaw Pact, no country, I don't think, and by the way, if I'm wrong about any of this, please, in the comments section down below, please correct me, because I'm doing a sweeping history of post-World War II geopolitics, so I'm probably, I, I suspect I'm getting some things wrong, so please correct me, and I'll correct it in the description uh, of the episode. Unlike the Warsaw Pact, no country ever became a part of NATO because NATO demanded it. The countries join NATO because they want in. The only country forcing Finland and Sweden to join NATO this year is Russia. Yes, it is true that because Germany invaded Russia during World War II, Russia has every right to be paranoid of being invaded again. But it's also true that Russia invaded Finland and Poland during World War II. And then after World War II, Russia made sure all of Eastern Europe answered to Moscow. And when Hungary and Czechoslovakia toyed with independence, Russian tanks rolled in. Russia invades countries 
countries that don't want to be invaded. That's true. It's also true that America invades countries. We invaded Iraq. We even invaded uh, the American Expeditionary Force under Woodrow Wilson right after World War I invaded Russia. That's true. But under Putin, Russia has invaded neighboring countries like Georgia, Kazakhstan, Chechnya, and of course, Ukraine. And it's also true that he messes with our elections and funds the National Rifle Association. When is the last time America invaded Canada or Mexico? It's been a while. And I know we tamper with countries in Central America. That's true. A lot of things are true. Add it all up. These are the truths. Add it all up. America inter interferes with democracies overseas. And like I said at the top, we really don't care about democracy. We, we interfere with countries all over the world. But so does Russia. They interfere in our elections as well as Canada's, Great Britain's, France, and Germany's. It's true that America's foreign policy stinks. We kill a lot of people overseas, and it's true the world does not like America because of that. But it's also true that Putin is a destabilizing force. His oligarchs are taking nearly, I think they took like 80% of Russia's GDP and parked it in offshore accounts, causing massive poverty in Russia and more instability in the West. That's true. What's also true is those offshore accounts are here in America. Or if they're not in America, we're transferred overseas by American banks. And it's also true that Wall Street looted Moscow right after the fall of the Soviet Union. A lot of things are true. Add it all up. The Soviet Union only formed the Warsaw Pact as a response to NATO after World War II. That is true. It's true. A lot of Americans, especially the America Firsters, wanted Truman to finish off Stalin after Hitler. Okay, that's true. It's also true that many Warsaw Pact countries didn't want to be under the Soviet Union's thumb. It's also true that NATO, unlike Russia, never invaded a member state. Russia's tanks rolled into Czechoslovakia and Hungary and almost rolled into Poland. I don't believe NATO ever invaded a NATO country. The only Warsaw Pact nation that was able to withdraw from the Warsaw Pact was Albania. And that was only because China was able to guarantee its security and Russia didn't want to mess with China. But... Uh, Eastern Europe has a long memory, and they, they remember what it was like being under Soviet domination behind the Iron Curtain. And that's why when the Soviet Union fell, they wanted to join NATO. Because they could leave if they wanted. President Charles de Gaulle pulled France out of NATO in 1966. When de Gaulle had the gall after we bailed, after we won World War II for France, when de Gaulle pulled out of uh, NATO in 66, American tanks didn't start rolling down the Champs-Élysées saying, oh, no, you don't. Eventually, France rejoined NATO in 2009 by its own free will. That's far different from... Prague in 68, where Russian troops rolled into Czechoslovakia, far different from Russian tanks rolling into Hungary to quell a student uprising. Many Eastern European countries felt colonized by the Soviet Union. 
it's also true that they were probably better off uh, under communism than they are now with capitalism. Uh, but they wanted to join NATO because they were terrified of Russia. They were terrified that Russia would ideologically colonize them after the fall of the Soviet Union. A lot of things are true. It's true that America is evil, but so is Russia. Yes, Russia defeated Hitler. That is true. America played some role, but it was mostly Russia. Russia bared the brunt of World War II. It's true. They, they deserve a buffer between Germany and Russia. It's true. Even though after World War II, Germany pretty much had no army. It's true. NATO expansion coming right up to the Russian border is menacing. But those NATO countries up against the Russian border, nobody from NATO invaded them and made them join NATO. Nobody forced these countries to join NATO. They wanted to join. That's true. It's also true that NATO is a protection racket. It's a bunch of mobsters where member countries have to pay 2% of their gross national product on weapons, whether they need them or not. And all that money in this protection racket that is NATO, all that money goes towards American, French, Swedish, British, and German defense manufacturers. That's true. It's also true that NATO has kept the peace. Let me repeat that. It's also true that as corrupt as NATO is, it's also true that NATO has kept the peace. In the past century, in the 20th century, tens of millions of civilians and soldiers died on the European battlefield. NATO, for better or worse, has maintained the peace. Article 5 of the NATO Treaty states that an attack against one is an attack against all. And it's only been invoked once, right after 9-11. And that was a mistake. That was a mistake. But that's the only time NATO has ever invoked Article 5. Uh, they shouldn't have, because 9-11 wasn't a military attack. Uh, NATO was wrong. And they should not have sent troops to Afghanistan because Afghanistan had nothing to do with 9-11. The Taliban had nothing to do with 9-11. Bin Laden was living uh, in the hills, shuttling between Pakistan and Afghanistan. So NATO made a, uh, NATO is partly to blame for this travesty. That's true, but it is also true that since the formation of NATO, America rarely sends troops to Europe to keep the peace because for the most part, there has been peace in Europe because of NATO. I know, Serbia, I know. Because of NATO, there has been peace in Europe. And if Ukraine were a member of NATO last year, Russia would have never, ever invaded. I know NATO went to Afghanistan and went to, into Serbia, but for the most part, there is Europe before NATO and there is Europe after NATO. Europe after NATO is better than Europe before NATO. That is true. Yes, it's also true the military contractors have all gotten rich. That's true, too. But again, it's also true that there has been little to no bloodshed in Europe since the formation of Europe. A lot of things are true. Add it all up. It is true that according to the latest polling, 
83% of Ukrainians want to join NATO. Now, it's also true that back in 2012, 10 years ago, when Yanukovych was the leader of Ukraine, only 28% supported NATO. Both things are true. There was a time when Ukraine didn't want to join NATO. There's a time when Ukraine did want to join NATO. It is true that Yanukovych was an ally of Putin's. And it is true, probably true, that he was corrupt and stole millions from Ukraine. It is also probably true that then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton under Obama was instrumental in the 2014 Maidan uprising, a coup, some say, that sent Yanukovych running to the Donbass region and into the arms of Russia. It is also true that Putin responded to the coup, the Maidan uprising, by taking Crimea. That seems to be true. And it's true that Crimea used to belong to Russia, that Crimea was a gift to Ukraine. But when it was seized by Putin, Crimea belonged to Ukraine. It is true that in the 50s, Crimea was gifted to Ukraine. But it is also true that when Putin seized Crimea, it belonged to Ukraine. It is true that there are separatists in the Donbass region who want to be part of Russia. But it's also true that there are Ukrainians living in the Donbass region who want that region to stay in Ukraine. Both things are true. It is true, we think, that Boris Johnson, when he was prime minister of Great Britain, we think, flew last year to Ukraine and told Zelensky, do not make a peace deal. I think that's true. It's also true that Zelensky has offshored his money. It's also true that he's probably being propped up by a Ukrainian oligarch. It's also true that the Nazi Azov uh, Brigade has been absorbed in the, into the Ukrainian army. But it's also true that the head rabbi in Ukraine says they don't have a problem with Nazis in Ukraine. It's also true that Putin's private army, the Wagner Group, has Nazi sympathies. All these things can be true. Add it up. It's true. Hillary Clinton is corrupt. When she was Secretary of State, it's probably true that she tried to get Ukraine absorbed into NATO and the EU. Probably true. But she is not Vladimir Putin. And what I'm saying from too many who spoke at that rally on Sunday, what I'm saying from Tucker Carlson and too many Republicans are people who hate Hillary Clinton more than they hate Vladimir Putin. Yes, it is true that Hillary Clinton, as Secretary of State under Obama, is responsible for the bombing of Libya. She is a hawk and an interventionist, but she is not Vladimir Putin. Because unlike Putin, Hillary will accept the results of an election. Like when the winner is Donald Trump. When Hillary Clinton loses an election, she doesn't send her deplorables to attack the Capitol. Some of these people who spoke at the Rage Against the War Machine anti-war rally, some, not all, but too many, hate Hillary Clinton so much they love Putin and are rooting for him in Ukraine. I watched some of the march on Sunday and some of those people 
not all, but some, want Ukraine defeated, destroyed, and absorbed into Russia. They hate Zelensky so much, they love Putin. So, I didn't see a march for peace on Sunday. I saw a march against Ukraine, and I'm not willing to go there. It is true that we have a military-industrial complex in America draining us dry. It is true that Biden is a liar. It is true that Anthony Blinken, our Secretary of State, is a war profiteer. It is true that the Biden administration favors bombs over people. But I'm not going to say they are eviler, eviler, more evil than Putin. I'm not going there. America, it is true, is an empire. It is true we are loan sharks to the third world. And when you factor in our contribution to climate change and our refusal to address it, it is true that we are probably responsible for more destruction of this planet than any other nation, just by the sheer size of our economy. All that is true. I have many problems with my country. But what's also true is there are 7 billion people on this planet, and they are all trying to kill each other. They were trying to kill each other before America became a superpower, and they were still trying to kill each other when America and Russia after World War II were the superpowers. And now with America and maybe China as the two superpowers, people are still trying to kill each other. People are killing each other. And we didn't invent, America didn't invent killing each other. And I know it's hard for some of us to believe, but sometimes, sometimes, rarely, but sometimes we actually stop people from killing each other. Sometimes, rarely, very, very rarely, almost never, once, once, by accident. After World War II, we established, after World War II, we established a global order. We, along with Great Britain, France, we created a global order. We created military alliances like NATO and the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank. And I get it. These organizations... They're not problematic, they're evil. They're, they're loan sharks. Uh, NATO is a protection racket. The International Mon Monetary Fund and the World Bank, they're, they're loan sharks. Although NATO does keep Europe safe. Europe uh, isn't killing each other because of NATO. Uh, we also established the United Nations which is a force for good in this world. The United Nations is a force for good in this world. Maybe instead of listening to Tulsi Gabbard, Tucker Carlson, Ron Paul, Jimmy Dore, maybe we should listen to the United Nations. The Secretary General of the UN is Antonio Guterres. And before being Secretary General of the UN, he was the Secretary General of the Socialist Party in Portugal and was that country's Prime Minister from 1995 to 2002. How come here in America we know more about what Tucker Carlson thinks about Ukraine than what the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio, Antonio Guterres, does. Why is that? The Republicans are isolationists. And a lot of the people who spoke at that rally 
on Sunday are isolationists. They don't like the UN because the UN reeks of globalism. It smells like George Soros. Many of those people who claim they want peace in Ukraine are the same people who want America to be able to act unilaterally without the UN's permission. They don't believe in global restraint. And that's the only way for peace. It's through the UN. Antonio Guterres. Imagine Bernie Sanders overseeing the United Nations. That's what we have right now. Guterres lends voice to the urgency of now. The famine, the death, the refugee crisis that the war in Ukraine is creating now. And whose side is Antonio Guterres on? Not Russia's. Not Russia's. He's on the side of Ukraine. He wants peace talks, but he's on the side of Ukraine and has gone on record identifying Putin as the aggressor. I listen to Antonio Guterres because I listen to socialists in charge of the UN. I also listen to Pink Floyd. And I listen to Roger Waters because I think it's important to have artistic voices out there like Roger Waters, even if he's sometimes problematic. To me, the invasion of Ukraine can be reduced to a man punching a woman. Because when a man punches a woman, there is no relitigating the past. And I don't want to relitigate the past. No matter what a woman said or did, including throwing the first punch, there is no relitigating the past when a man hits a woman. When a man in a relationship hits a woman, that is the beginning of history. And everything that came before doesn't matter. Roger Waters, who spoke by videotape at Sunday's rally, also spoke before the United Nations earlier this month at the invitation of Russia. Roger Waters from Pink Floyd said to the UN what he said to the so-called peace rally on Sunday. He said that Russia was wrong for invading Ukraine, but he added, it was not unprovoked. It was not unprovoked. And that's when he lost me. That is what a man says after he hits a woman. I was wrong for hitting you, but it was not unprovoked. You are either for peace or you are not. There's no excuse for domestic or foreign abuse. So it makes me question Roger Waters' character. And character counts because we need to be able to trust these people to help arrive at informed decisions. You cannot justify war by saying the aggressor was provoked. It makes me question Roger Waters' character. Variety from this month. This is from Variety. Headline, February 7th, 2023. Headline, Roger Waters is anti-Semitic to rotten core, says former Pink Floyd lyricist, Polly Sampson and her husband, David Gilmore, emphatically agrees. Hmm, interesting. Polly Sampson, who is married to David Gilmore, right? They Pink Floyd, David Gilmore and Roger Waters, Pink Floyd. We'll forget about Sid Barrett. This is 
Polly Sampson's tweet from February 6, 2023. Sadly, Roger Waters, you are anti-Semitic to your rotten core. Also a Putin apologist and a lying, thieving, hypocritical, tax-avoiding, lip-syncing, oh boy, lip-syncing, misogynistic, sick-with-envy megalomaniac, enough of your nonsense, and David Gilmore agrees with his wife. Sounds like David Gilmore and Roger Waters kind of ended up like Lennon and McCartney. But character counts. And maybe, maybe David Gilmore and his wife are right about Roger Waters. You cannot say Putin was wrong for invading Ukraine, but it was not unprovoked. Article 51 of the United Nations Charter only allows for a nation to attack another nation if there is incontrovertible evidence they are about to be attacked. Ukraine was not about to attack Russia a year ago. Now, it's true, Zelensky, he was attacking the Donbass region. That is true. Before the Russian invasion, Zelensky seems to have escalated the rocket attacks on the Donbass region. That's where some of the Russian-speaking nationalists, the breakaway part of Ukraine, that's where they lived. It is true that Zelensky was bombing parts of the Donbass region. But the Donbass region is inside Ukraine. And while there are breakaway regions, Russia has no right, no legal authority to attack Ukraine to protect these so-called Russian nationals living in the Donbass region. It was the same bogus reason Hitler used to invade the Sudetenland. It was the same bogus reason President Polk used for starting a war with Mexico in 1846, claiming uh, in, in, with America, he was claiming that Mexico was attacking Americans inside a disputed territory that didn't really belong to America. Uh, the Sudetenland didn't belong to Germany, but there were German-speaking people there. The Donbass region doesn't belong to Russia, but there are Russian people living there. And that doesn't give you the right to invade another sovereign country uh, just because there are people who speak your language and might identify with your country. Under international law, you are not allowed... Uh, to uh, use protecting these people as a pretext for an invasion. A year ago, Russia invaded Ukraine. Start the clock. History starts on that day. The day Putin invaded Ukraine is when you start the clock. It doesn't matter why Putin invaded. It doesn't matter if Biden tricked Putin into invading. You know, there's a possibility that Biden tricked Putin into invading so Putin would get stuck in a quagmire. It doesn't matter that American weapons manufacturers are making billions. It doesn't matter that our oil companies are making record profits off the invasion because Russian oil has been cut off from Germany and the rest of Europe. It doesn't matter that Seymour Hersh is probably right, that America probably blew up the Nord Stream pipeline to guarantee that Germany would only buy its gas from America or the Middle East. The only thing that matters is Russia invaded Ukraine in direct violation of international law. Again, it doesn't matter why a man punches a woman. Doesn't matter. History starts on that punch. 
History starts on the day Putin invaded illegally Ukraine. I trust the United Nations. I don't trust NATO, although they have kept the peace in Europe. Uh, the EU, I don't know enough about it. I don't trust the World Bank or the IMF. I know they're bad. Uh, I don't trust most of the other post-World War II pillars of stability. But I do trust the United Nations. Yes, the UN fails more than it succeeds, but that's because man has a much bigger appetite for war than he does for peace. The United Nations condemns Russia, not Ukraine, Russia. And the UN is demanding that Russia get out of Ukraine now and pay reparations. I pray for peace, but not if it means the extermination of the Ukrainian people. Not if it means Ukraine has to live under Putin's thumb. I don't have the answer. And I know America doesn't have the answer. I also know Putin is the problem. And the solution is this guy, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. None of us are informed enough to make a righteous decision on Ukraine. Certainly not Jimmy Dore, Tucker Carlson, Dr. Ron Paul, Tulsi Gabbard, or Roger Waters. But like Dr. King and Ralph Nader was for my father, this guy, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, is the one I listen to when it comes to war and peace, because peace is his job. If you uh, want to correct me, uh, if you have any corrections or suggestions or how I got things wrong, uh, I probably got some things wrong. Please correct me gently in the comments section down below, and I will look it up and issue a, a correction. Uh, I want to be truthful here. So please, if you have any, if you want to correct me, uh, I, please correct me in the comments section down below. Comment in the comments section down below. If for some reason you enjoyed this, please hit the like button and share it with uh, your friends. I don't have corporate sponsors. I don't have uh, anybody backing me, no podcast network. The only reason you're listening to this podcast is because somebody shared it with you. So if you think this was useful, please share it. Uh, please copy and paste the link to this episode and share it with your friends, either on social media or on email, please hit the like button. Office hours every Friday night it starts at 6 p.m. I do make myself available to all the listeners. If you want to talk to me, I hold office hours. Uh, it starts at 6 p.m. Eastern. <clears throat> I'm really ava available 8 o'clock Eastern for 90 minutes if you want to talk to me. And then the community takes over. Uh, it's really run by the community. I only take up 90 minutes. There are other people who uh, are more interesting. But if you want to talk to me, if you want to meet me <clears throat> from 8 to 9.30, go to my website to sign up for office hours Friday night. Starts at 6 p.m. <clears throat> I'm there at 8. And while you're over at my website, please sign up for my newsletter. It comes out every Friday. I think that's it. I'm David Feldman, reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak.